Baker, reading Cyber Dogs and Citizens of the Interwebs. This is Ren Diggity Dogger coming at you in another episode of Minecraft Survival from the Hermitcraft server. We're kicking things off today, my fellow Cyber Dogs from all over the world, with a glorious view into the aquarium of Grand Central Station. And as you guys can see, the Ren Diggity Dog has been on the grind something fierce this week. Oh man, the amount of white concrete that I have created to create the stomach of Grand Central Station, it's kind of mind numbing. And to be honest, I don't really want to talk about it. Uh, you're literally in my brain right now. Hold on, let me back it up a little bit there. Hi guys, what's happening? <laughs> Oh man, it's turned out so good though, guys. Look at this place. You know, I always had a vision of adding an aquarium into Grand Central Station, but I could never really figure out how it was going to be added to the build because I didn't really do it in the creative build uh, of Grand Central. But uh, this week I decided just to get my head down, make a ridiculous amount of wide concrete and build something underneath Grand Central. And man, it has turned out real, real spicy. Do I actually have any more wide concrete left? Yes, I do. There's a little, a few things that I want to show you down here. Uh, firstly, let's get ourselves into the ocean and have a look at this thing from a distance. Look at this, guys. I've added basically a wall on the side of all of the, uh, the, the, the diagonal sides of Grand Central Station. You know, a lot of you guys were saying in the comments, Rent, Grand Central looks really sweet, but it is looking kind of weird just floating on top of the water. You know, it doesn't feel like it could float. It doesn't feel like a like a like it's realistically placed in the ocean. And uh, so this week I added a bunch of walls to the outside here, uh, flush to the, the depth of the different terminals around the station. And we have this giant stomach thing coming down the bottom of Grand Central. My goodness, it looks like a giant... Death Star down here or something, right? Looks like something from Star Wars. Um, but it's looking absolutely awesome. Yo, Cods, what do you think? <laughs> you like what you see? Looking pretty sweet, am I right? Oh, man. Uh, the number of drowns that I've killed this week, though, guys, is actually... it. I gotta say something about the drowns. They are really irritating when you are working on a big build underwater. I'm not gonna lie. Even with the conduit, they just... They are the most annoying mobs ever, man. They just come and drive you crazy. Um, anyway, it is immense stuff. Down here isn't it like the structure just looks absolutely amazing under the water i think we need to add a little bit more dark prismarine lining around this area maybe we can just spruce this up a little bit but yeah as you guys can see all of the walls have been spruced up the wazoo and uh, maybe we can do a little bit of a fly around here too hold on can we get the rockets in time there we go <laughs> and uh, you can see that grand central now it has a butt right now <laughs> right it has a booty which i think is what the build was lacking and uh, now that we've got these beautiful walls all the way around with that little touch of dark prismarine i think that's really brought the the build together and uh it's really helped to bring those terminals out too right those terminals looking real good uh absolutely amazing now let me take you inside of grand central station um to show you guys exactly what is up from the inside well i guess before we do that let's have a quick look inside here because uh, this is where the aquarium is going to be there's only one thing that bothers me about this build maybe some of you guys will agree with me and that is the conduit in the middle the conduit is an odd number across and our station is actually an even number build so we've got a little bit of a disconnect here a bit of asymmetry going on but uh, I guess we'll just have to accept that that's the way it is that squid kind of likes the conduit doesn't he <laughs> check it I'm chilling um, but inside of here guys we are going to build a massive and beautiful coral reef type structure uh, we're going to turn this whole interior into a really beautiful aquarium we're going to fill it up with tropical fish from Falsimetry's tropical fish shop and uh, there's already a couple of a little bit of sea life in here we got some cods and some squids and whatnot uh maybe we'll get our turtle in there too right we, we trapped a turtle uh, over at our old base maybe we'll get the turtle in there also maybe a couple dolphins and uh, we're gonna have a really sweet aquarium cooking here in grand central man am i so happy with how the that cavity turned out the the stomach of grand central and on top of that take a look at this right we installed these windows uh, a couple of episodes back and i was kind of worried about what the black glass might look like but look at this when we get coral reef down there with light sources and whatnot this black this black glass excuse me is just absolutely perfect for this i think look at that man we can see that squid we can see the conduit we'll be able to see all of the beautiful things down there and uh, that is well the last massive addition to grand central right all we need to do now for this build 
starting to add all the details. We need to, of course, add all the uh, the ticket terminals to or the ticket booths to all of the terminals, should I say? And we need to get some spice going on in the 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 main lobby here of Grand Central. But man, this build is almost complete now my dude it's pretty insane and i'm really really pleased with how it's turned out and um yeah I'll probably do most of the rest of the work off camera i guess uh, every now and then we'll come together for a little bit of work here on grand central for the for the big things right uh, that aquarium build was very very grindy so i just did it off camera this week that uh, maybe maybe took me three or four hours i guess to get done but um it actually turned out real spice very very happy with it and have spent a ridiculous amount of diamonds on ink so falsy is now rich <laughs> to make all of this dark prismarine but luckily the deal that we made with azuma has given me enough uh, pris uh, prismarine shardage <laughs> to be able to make all of this dark prismarine uh, but yeah the death star of Gra of uh, the hermitcraft server looking absolutely amazing i love it now last episode guys we set up a sale over at big logs incorporated didn't we and i'm kind of excited to pop my head in there to have a look at the profits that we have made it's been a couple of days since i checked and uh hopefully we've done some good sales and of course we've been working out over here at the big rocks docks thanks for all the feedback by the way in the last episode guys you guys have such awesome ideas one of the ideas that i really loved was adding some sort of a crane here a crane that would be moving the goods from the ships onto the docks, right? I think that's a, a fantastic idea. Maybe we'll add a couple of cranes here. And there was a couple of other ideas that you guys gave me too, which is going to really make that build pop. But uh, let's have a look at some profits to kick things off in today's episode, baby. Oh, man, we're half price logs right now. One diamond for a stack of luggage. And uh, let's start all the way over here at the spruce. Hello, bling blanks. Get in my belly, baby. Nice. 18 diamonds for spruce logs. That is pretty insane. Let's have a look at the dark oak wood here. Oh, my goodness. Somebody go into town on the luggage here in Big Logs Incorporated. 10, it looks like it, right? 10 jungle logs sold. Beautiful. How about acacia? 10 also. Okay, so it looks like somebody came in here and bought 10 of each. It feels like it. Is that 10? Uh, yeah, that's 10, right? Nice. How about birch? Yeah, there's 10 and 1. So yeah, somebody definitely came in here and did a bit of a shopping spree, got themselves 10 of each stack, uh, which is probably going to be all the wood that you would need for at least a couple of months. And it looks like somebody went to town on the oak wood. So uh, basically a stack and a smidge of diamond action, which is amazing, guys. That is so sweet. Take a look at this. I've also organized my, my end chest here and i can very easily restock the shop straight out of the ender chest and uh, i want to keep the stock rolling you know if any hermit comes in here and buys it all uh, i of course want to keep the stock cooking so that this shop always has some good stuff selling in it and uh, let's actually deal with something right now uh, while we're at it also just noticed all of this white concrete powder in my inventory there was actually something that i wanted to do over at grand central in today's episode so we'll get to that however there is something that is bothering me profusely and and uh, this was pointed out by quite a few of you guys in the comments of the last episode, as well as a few of you guys on Twitter actually sent me some screenshots of this particular problem that needs to be solved. And of course, this is one of those problems in Minecraft that we like to call a little bit of OCD action. There's a, a part of a build that is just not quite complete and it drives some of you guys absolutely insane. And to be honest, it also drives me insane. <laughs> At the very top of one of our sales banners, one of you or a couple of you actually noticed that we are kind of missing a bit of dark oak wood fence action, right? That one's got a bit of dark oak wood fencage and this one doesn't. Can we land up here? Yes. Uh, who was that? <laughs> got a hermit just floating around the place. Nice. Uh, so for all of your OCD um, problems, guys, here we go that is going to complete the sales sign okay can you guys stop tweeting me now i fixed it <laughs> oh man i do enjoy when you guys find those things though those little ocd issues um it's very amusing um anyway kind of a nice view from up here right really nice view of big rocks docks down there um, looking real good, man. We're not going to be working on this project today, though, by the way, guys. We are actually going to be working on a brand new project today. We're going to open up another project uh, on, the, uh, on the series, or for the series anyway. It's going to be kind of like a mini project. But it is something that we're going to need to do in order to progress with the Big Logs project. So um, it's all going to sort of tie together quite nicely. However, before we get to that, I picked up a bunch of white concrete powder today because... Um, well, I wanted to show you a little something that I'm planning to do here in the aquarium. And one of the problems that I have with the aquarium at the moment 
is all of the colored uh, concrete in the roof of the place, right? These are the sort of uh, the blocks of the, uh, the top floor of Grand Central Station, the walkways and whatnot. And I think they look super janky, right? Like the color looks really, really bad. So I was looking at all of these colors, guys, and I kind of had an interesting idea, right? At first, what I wanted to do is I wanted to just add a huge layer of white concrete powder to the roof of the aquarium, just like get a thick layer of white concrete powder and be done with it. Um, but I think we can actually fix this little problem in a much more interesting way. If we have a look at these colors, they actually make some pretty interesting patterns, almost as if we're looking at the top of a motherboard or something like that, right? Like it almost looks like a, like a computer chip or something with all the different things. And that naturally produces some pretty interesting patterns in the roof. So here's what I'm thinking. Why don't we keep the shape of the colors by adding white concrete blocks to the colored sections of the roof only. Uh, wow, my brain is not really functioning right now, my dudes. I don't think I've had enough freaking coffee today, man. Give me one second over here. There we go. That should, that should get things fired up. Oh, man, that is a that is a strong cup of coffee right there. Damn. <laughs> uh, anyway, check it out. I wanted to add some white concrete powder here to all of the different uh, colored blocks right in the roof. And I think that's going to add like a really interesting pattern. I actually did it over here already. Uh, this is gray concrete up here, right? That's going around the diagonal of Grand Central. And you can see that adds some pretty interesting stuff here, right? Like some weird shading and stuff. But I think that kind of looks pretty sweet. And when I look into the aquarium from the terminals, I do want to not just see like really flat walls and stuff. You know, the floor of the aquarium right now is pretty flat. Of course, most of that is going to be sort of coral reef and stuff. But, you know, we want to make sure that it's, I don't know, that the interior of the aquarium looks as interesting as possible. So if we can like fill in these colored sections of the roof with white concrete, I reckon we could get a pretty interesting thing going over here. Look at this. I like seeing all these different cavities and stuff here, right? I think that looks pretty sweet. I mean, it might end up looking super janky, but I think it's worth a try. Doing all of this work underwater this week, guys, has taught me a couple of things about Minecraft. As I mentioned earlier, number one, drowns are extremely annoying. <laughs> number two, man, it is so much easier to work with concrete when you are working underwater with the conduit. We don't have to turn the concrete powder into solid concrete anymore. We can just place it and it automatically turns into solid concrete. Um, very, very awesome. A huge savings of time. And uh, I've just gone and made a whole bunch more white concrete. I think I made another half a, a chest worth of concrete. But we are about almost done here with the roof of the aquarium here in Grand Central. Can't wait to have a look at what it looks like. I think this is going to be a really, really nice touch to it. A very, very simple concept. Just cover up all of the color with white and that has definitely changed things in here hasn't it uh, that was the last little section that I needed to do let's try get all the way down to the bottom of the stomach and look up at the roof because that'll probably give us a very decent view of it and yeah look at that guys that looks so sweet I love it I mean we could probably add a few more details in here too maybe a couple more lines of white concrete at the areas here that are a little bit too flat or we can get some more sea lantern torch action going on down here uh, and that'll sort of make it pop also over time we've had a lot more fish coming in here man we've got a school of salmon now chilling up in the aquarium some cod and salmon hanging out over there we had a couple more squids popping their head in here uh so i think the animal life kind of likes it in here it's quite safe it's quite cozy really and i guess this conduit is warming up the water also <laughs> It's uh, it's kind of awesome. As much as it hurts me to say this, cyber diggity dogs, the gates of the Convex Corporation is looking pretty freaking sweet, isn't it? My goodness, Scar doing an amazing job out here. On the other side of this gate, of course, is Convex land, including a giant smelting machine that we used a couple of episodes ago. Now, we need to have a quick chat about this while we have a look at this beautiful build. I really love this wall. I love like uh, the use of, of iron fences in there, right? That is so cool. Man, and you can see a little bit of Scar's terraforming going on out here too. Uh, it looks kind of ominous though, right? <laughs> Gates of Mordor up in this business, man. Uh, anyway, a couple of episodes ago, I showed you Cub Fan's amazing auto smelter. Since then, he's actually shut the place down. <laughs> it's no longer operational due to illegal use, apparently. 
And yeah, I actually, it's my bad. I was not supposed to use that giant machine. A lot of you uh, Concorp fans out there, a lot of you Convex fans, let me know. Ren, that is reserved for Convex and iJevin only. You are not allowed to use the auto smelter, which is a little bit of a problem for our Big Rocks Docks company, my dudes, because of course, we have got quite a few blocks that we need to smelt up in this business. And that means we're going to have to take things into our own hands. If we can't use this magical, amazing auto smelter of doom uh, that the Convex have, we're going to have to make one of our own, aren't we? And that is going to be our next mini project here on the Hermitcraft server. And we're going to head over all the way back to where we started this series over at the Fantasy District. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of a project that uh, we haven't really got to, but we sort of spoke about a couple of weeks ago. And that is, of course, the fairy pirate grotto that we are sharing with False Symmetry. And for those of you guys who don't know what's up, there is a hole down here uh, with the beacon at the bottom of it. And this is going to become a shared base between False Symmetry and I. We're going to be creating a co-op base down here. And we got some pretty cool ideas for it. Looks like False has been doing a little bit of work already over here. Very nice. I think she's connected up her surface base to the bottom. Let's have a look. Okay, so we've got some stairs here. And yeah, oh my goodness. There is, oh yes, this is sweet. She's connected it up to the main um, rotundra or whatever this thing is called that is cool so falsi's given herself access into the fairy fairy pirate grotto hole and that is perfect for us actually because the idea of this particular project guys is that falsi and i are going to each be doing different builds down here and when those builds are done we're then going to be revealing it to each other right so we're going to build something here that uh, both falsi and i can use but i'm not going to let falsi know what it is until it's finished and then We'll bring her down here for a big reveal. Now, we need to be able to smelt a bunch of stuff, right? Here's what I'm thinking. Why don't we build for ourselves, uh, as a first little project down here in the Fairy Pirate Grotto of Doom, an auto smelting facility? It's not going to be as epic and as amazing as the convex smelter that can smelt like half a chest of items in like one minute. <laughs> But it is going to have its own a little bit of spice to it, right? I've got a really, really cool idea for this auto smelting facility. And I guess what we first need to do here is create a little bit of a spoiler wall for our friend Falsy. She's not allowed to see what is up here. Um, so let's add a little bit of a barrier over here, okay? Rain dog at work, False Symmetry. Do not pop your head in here. You are not allowed to see what's cracking. I guess this is going to be a decent spot for it. I haven't even really thought about this. You know, the, the whole concept of this, this uh, fairy pirate grotto is that it's kind of just a, a huge network of caves, of, do of damp, moist caves that have magical crystals in them and lots of glowing cool stuff down here. So I guess the facilities that are going to be down here, like storage and smelting and enchanting and whatnot, they will each have their own little cave system and it all be all, will all be a little bit all over the place, a little bit sort of asymmetrical so to speak um, and I think that's gonna that's gonna be what makes it really really cool um, so I, I'm gonna try keep this just as like all over the place as possible let's just we've got some haste two action going on from the beacon and uh, our efficiency five pickaxe let's just sort of hack out very wildly a little bit of a cave over here right and I want it to be um, as sort of messy as possible because the idea that I have for this order for smelting facility is going to need a rather messy type of cave system um, so let's just dig out a couple of cavities over here um hack all the way through here like this and did we just run out of beacon juice there maybe um but there we go that looks that looks about right that looks about right look at that okay <laughs> looking super messy but check this out dudes i have such a cool idea for this auto smelting facility and i don't have any wood on me oh i do i've got some birch logs over here okay so let's make a crafting table to kick things off and uh what we're going to need to do also i guess is make a bunch of furnaces that's going to be step one for any uh um, auto smelting facility worth its salt so let's collect a little bit of this cobblestone make ourselves a few fern eyes and whatnot now i've been thinking a little bit about this build uh when i've been falling asleep at night and i've been trying to figure out exactly how this can look and how we could fit this into the theme that this is some sort of a magical enchanted cave in which pirate fairies live right? That's the law of the place. So we've got to try and match that. And I thought maybe what we could do is create some sort of an auto smelting facility um, where the fairies are doing the smelting, right? 
I know this is super nerdy, guys. Stick with me, okay? It's going gonna, it's gonna to come out real sweet. So if we were just to throw a couple of furnaces into these walls, right? So maybe we throw one here. Uh, we throw one over here. There's, you know, a couple of furnaces like this, sort of different levels, different heights and whatnot. The way that I, I see these furnaces, if we kind of look at the way they look, it almost looks like a home for a fairy, right? It's like this is the entrance into the house and maybe this is their balcony. Uh, you know, fairies are obviously tiny, so they kind of live in the furnaces. And the idea for this partic particular facility is that we are going to add a bunch of items into like a minecart, for example, right? Like an, a delivery system. And all of the, uh, the items that we want to be smelted are going to be delivered to the fairies' houses. And through some magical magic, <laughs> the fairies are going to be cooking down the things that we're smelting. And of course, we'll be able to see that when the fairy is cooking something, of course, the lights in their house will turn on. <laughs> and that'll show us that the fairy is making some smooth stone out of the cobblestone or some iron out of the iron ore and what we'll also do of course is collect all of the materials out of the furnaces too so my sort of vision for this <laughs> when i was lying in my bed last night is that when we turn the facility on all of the, the the lights in the fairy houses will turn on, right? It'll go like ding, 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 ding. And you'll see all the lights of the houses turn on. And all the fairies will be hard at work smelting down the stuff for us. And uh, then I guess we'll have a sort of delivery um, chest over here, I guess, where we can collect everything that we smelted. Uh, but that's the kind of plan for this auto smelting facility. It is very nerdy, I must say. However... I think Falsy's going to like this. I think it's it's going to be real sweet. Like, we'll make this cave look really cool. Speaking of which, we need to hide all of this from her eyeballs, right? She can't see any of this jazz until it's done. There we go. Um, and, of course, we're going to fill this cave with some really cool stuff. Maybe some crystals and some really cool light features. We'll get the whole cave looking amazing. Um, and I guess we probably want to get... 32 furnaces in here 32 fairy homes I, I reckon is about right so this cave might need to be made a little bit bigger um but that's the concept for the auto smelter guys what do you think all right there we go guys i have cleaned up the cave got rid of all the diorite all the granite and installed 32 fairy houses into our auto smelting facility Man, this is going to look so sweet when it's up and running. I can imagine all of these houses turned on, the lights in here flickering away, smelting all of our stuff. It is going to be so sweet, man. The problem is, of course, we need to automate this, and that is going to be pretty tricky, I think. You know, usually in Minecraft, it's kind of easy to automate auto smelting. Uh, Automate, auto smelting, is is that even a proper terminology? Listen, this is technical Minecraft, okay guys? Ren Digger Dog isn't very good at technical Minecraft. Uh, I'm going to do my best for this project though, because if we can pull this off, it's going to be awesome. Uh, but usually when you set up an automatic smelting facility, you've got a row of furnaces like this, and usually you have like a rail running on top of it, and you have a, a hopper minecart delivering the items into the furnaces. And then on the back side of the furnaces, you have hoppers that are delivering fuel into the furnaces, and then at the bottom part of the furnaces you have hoppers that are taking out what gets smelted from the furnaces um, and well it's easy to do it when you've got furnaces in a row like this but when you've got furnaces all over the show like this this is gonna actually be really really tough guys I don't even know if I had the technical prowess to do this but I'm very keen to, to try at the very least get this done luckily we have an insane amount of iron that I have dug out of uh, the bacon mine over the last few weeks getting all of those diamonds um, so we don't have to worry about resources for this particular build I think we have more than enough wood and more than enough iron to make all the hoppers and all of the mine carts and all of the rails that we could ever need for something like this. Uh, but why don't we kick things off with a bunch of hoppers, actually. Uh, there we go. Let's make like 10 hoppers over here. And I think the best way to start this is to start with the... Um, maybe it's better to start with the delivery system, but I think maybe it's better to start with the... Um, not the delivery system, the output system, right? So we want to add hoppers into the bottom of each of these chests, and then those hoppers will need to flow into a hopper chain that is eventually going to end up as the output chest of our automatic smelting facility. Um, this is going to get real complicated, guys. My goodness. And I think we are going to be using an insane amount of hoppers to make this project work. 
I guess, though, uh, the more that I do this, basically what's going to happen, I think, is we're going to end up with uh, a hopper chain that's going to be on this level or maybe a level below. And all of these furnaces are going to feed into basically lines of hoppers, right? And maybe there'll be one major line of hoppers that runs down the middle of the facility, right? So maybe we'll have a major line of hopper that, that sort of runs here. And the output of the entire system is maybe, uh, maybe we should choose where the output is. Maybe the output is like over here, right? So when we open this, this is where everything that we smelt ends up. So we will have a, a chain of hoppers running underground and it'll eventually end up like that. So all of the items will travel via this hopper chain into the chest and then all of the hoppers coming out of the furnaces will connect up into this hopper chain. That probably feels like the cleanest way to do this. Good news, guys. I think I've come up with a pretty neat solution for the output problem for our auto smelting facility and that involves a U-bend of hoppers. <laughs> Um, I've added a couple of chests over here. There's going to be the output chests for our auto smelting facility. I've added two over here, right? And uh, we've got hoppers going into each of those. And then we have this hopper chain going into this smaller hopper chain, feeding the output chests over here. But this hopper chain is going to run around the circumference of our auto smelting facility, but at the bottom most level of the smelting facility and at the front of it too. So now each of these furnaces that we have can simply have a hopper chain that goes down to this level and then connects up to the U-bend wherever it is, right? So each of these will just have a vertical pillar of hoppers uh, connecting up to the system. And that should be able to feed all of the output from the furnace into the chests. And, uh, well, just to make sure that I haven't absolutely messed this up, the bottom of the hopper is the output, right? <laughs> just to make 100% sure. Um, I, you know, sometimes the Ren Digger in Dog's brain just needs to confirm things uh, because I'm not a technical player, but... I have been playing the game for long enough to know that the bottom is the out. Yeah, the bottom is the out. Okay, good stuff. <laughs> Man, uh, just needed to figure that one out before we install all of the hoppers. Uh, but yeah, that is the solution for the output. The input's another story. We'll cross that bridge where we get when we get there. But let's get some hoppers installed here, dudes. <laughs> Brain meltage confirmed, guys. The more hoppers that I have placed inside of our cave the more that I have realized how difficult it is going to be to actually make this work the way that I wanted to. I have now connected up every single furnace to the U-bend at the bottom of the cave. And uh, yeah, there's just hoppers everywhere, but it's actually not that complicated. It looks like I missed one of them over here. Um, one of the things that I've realized though, and maybe something that I didn't quite consider when I first started working on this is that we are going to need to get fuel into these furnaces. I think this is probably why I didn't do this one. And uh, to get fuel into furnaces, we need to have a hopper going into the back of a furnace, right? A furnace will receive fuel from the back of it. And that means every single backside of every single furnace needs to be exposed. And on top of that, we are going to need to run uh, a railway line uh, across the back of every single furnace. So we're going to have a railway line running behind every furnace and a hopper minecart dropping fuel into it but on top of that we're going to have a railway line running on top of every furnace dropping fuel into uh, the furnaces too so <laughs> we're going to have some seriously complicated railway lines in here if it's even possible um, and to be honest when I look at this now I think it's going to be really really tough for example the furnaces that are next to each other like this um, how the freak are we going to get railway lines to run next to each other especially considering railway lines don't like going up in diagonals um, and there's a whole bunch of other problems with rails too so I think what we're probably going to have to do is cut back on the number of furnaces here uh, to try and make that work but I guess we've got the output sorted now Next up is going to probably be fuel, uh, is the next system that we need to work on. Now, as much as I would love to continue working on this project with you guys today, my brain is fried right now by all of this hopper action, and I would like to sort of spread this project out over a few episodes. I'm also trying to make my episodes a little bit shorter for you guys. I know some of you out there don't really like the super long episodes. So let's say goodbye for today, my friends. Next episode, we will pick it up right here in the Fairy Pirate Auto Grotto 
Auto Cave Smelting thing, uh, which is the official name of it. And hopefully we'll be able to create something real awesome here for uh, Falsy and I's shared base. And, uh, well, I'm going to have to try and figure out off camera how we are going to add the fuel input and the uh, the, the resource input into the system. Going to be pretty tricky. But listen, guys, we're going to say goodbye for now. If you enjoyed the episode, please don't forget to smack the like button. If you want to keep up with this project and all the other projects on the series, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the jingle jangle bell. It's right next to the scribe button thing, okay? That just notifies you when we go live over here or when we go live when a new video comes out. And you know what? You know what to do, my dudes. Thank you very much for watching. Rending it in dog signing out. We will smell you all in the next episode.